Hello and good morning, it's me, Kenny Polcari, your host of the party, and today is Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023. And what is it that we need to know today? Well, we're asking ourselves, is it a deal or no deal? Well, it's no deal still, but there is hope, and that's like a big yawn to me and everybody else. Although, Janet keeps the heat on, right? The Dems must be paying her extra money just to turn the heat up in the kitchen. And the question now is, will Joey invoke the 14th Amendment? A deep fake artificial intelligence explosion photo takes $100 billion out of the market in minutes. And what are we having tonight for dinner? Well, summertime is coming. It's Memorial Day weekend. We're going to have the pasta fresca because it's such a great summertime dish. Look, there was no economic data yesterday to speak of, and we're at the end of earnings season, so no specific drama there. Uh, but there was a Goldman Sachs artificial intelligence conference that managed to steal some of the show talking about AI and all that stuff and all the excitement around it. So that did create some drama. Um, about how, you know, AI is going to change. It has and will change the world. Some of it good, some of it not so good, as we'll see. But in the end, the media remains sharply focused on the debt ceiling negotiations, and that has kept the algos alive, right? In and out, up and down, based on the headlines. The question that the algos keep asking is, is there a deal or no deal? So JoJo and Kevin met again on Monday, telling us again that a deal is within reach. Something they've been saying for two weeks now, yet nothing gets done. Everybody on both teams assuring us that a default is not an option, yet they can't seem to get it together. Uh, as a safety measure, though we talked about this yesterday, Joey is exploring what it would mean to invoke the 14th Amendment. Now, the 14th Amendment was passed by the U.S. Senate on June 8, 1866, and ratified on July 9, 1868, and it provides for all citizens that have equal protection of the law. So you ask, what does that have to do with the debt ceiling? And you would be right. But legal experts tell us that Section 4 of the amendment allows for the Treasury Department to keep borrowing money past the debt limit and that it would be unconstitutional for the U.S. to fail to make payments on our debt, all right? So did you see that? It would be unconstitutional for us to default. So yes, default is not an option. I've been saying that for weeks. It is not happening. So I wish they would just take that inflammatory language off the table because it does nothing for anybody, right? Because it's just not happening. So there it is. That's his out, right? If in fact these clowns in D.C. can't come to a bipartisan agreement, but it is not without risk. And we said that yesterday. No president has ever invoked the 14th Amendment in order to raise the debt ceiling. So you got to ask, does Joey want that to also be part of his legacy, along with so many, of other th so many other things, right? But I don't think he really does. But look, he's also 80 years old. Maybe he doesn't really care, right? Now, yesterday, Joey told us that he's offered up his compromise. So he's done his job, and he bears no responsibility for what happens best, saying, I am blameless if a deal doesn't get done. If Kevin and the GOP want to limit spending to 2022 levels, then they have to raise taxes on corporations and the wealthy, which is conveniently undefined, is what Joey wants. Otherwise, the implication is that the GOP will force him to pull the 14th Amendment lever essentially saying that if we don't get a deal, it's the House's issue, and the House is controlled by the GOP, right? You see where this is going? In the end, no matter which side you're on, the buck stops at the White House, period, the end. At this point, I'm not buying that one-sided argument. We elected him, and he bears the ultimate responsibility for being the adult in the room and for doing the right thing, okay? And not to be outdone, once again, Janet does it again. I mean, they must be paying her overtime, right? Only this time she changed her message just a little bit. Last week, she said that, um, that the U.S. was at risk of a default as soon as June 1st if Congress did not address the debt limit. Then yesterday, she called early June a hard deadline and covered her backside by saying the timeline was based on currently available data and federal receipts outlays and debt 
could vary from these estimates. Isn't that interesting? So it's early June, June 1st, is it June 15th? What she conveniently also left out is there's at least a $92 billion slush fund at her disposal, above and beyond the $67 billion that's already in the checking account which would take us through the 1st and carry us to the 15th when she gets a boatload of new tax payments that'll take us through mid-July at least. I mean, they pointed that out in articles two weeks ago. And remember, Joey told us that the default is not happening. So why all the drama? In any event, by the end of the day, the Dow lost 140 points. The S&P ended flat. The Nasdaq gained 63. The Russell added 22. The Transports gained 36. The Nasdaq was up because of that AI conference and uh, uh, that Goldman was sponsored, right? It was all about AI. And did you happen to notice what happened at 10 o'clock in the morning? Did you see how the markets, all the indexes, plunged, right? Losing $100 billion worth of losses in only three minutes. Yeah, that was a deep fake, artificially created picture of an explosion outside the Pentagon. The picture went viral on Twitter and other social media sites. The algos, in typical fashion, they shoot first and ask questions later, right? Sending all the indexes plunging before it was deemed fake, you know, in, in a short period of time, uh, but after the damage was done, right? So it only to only recover all those losses, but forcing all of us to recognize how quickly the markets could be impacted by technology. And this is just the beginning. Can you imagine what's next? That's a whole nother conversation. I mean, tell me, how do you actually regulate against that? Yeah, I thought so, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so now it's all about eliminating the noise, right? And the debt ceiling is noise. The deep fakes are noise. Yelling is noise. Honestly, all of this drama is noise. And the idea that the NAACP is warning folks to avoid coming to Florida is also noise. But I'm going to say that is a new low in terms of political bullshit. And it does nothing positive for the country at all. Nothing. As I said, there was no eco data yesterday to speak of, but there is plenty today. S&P U.S. Manufacturing PMI of 50, which sits right on the neutral line. S&P U.S. Services PMI of 52 and a half, which is what's expected, and that's expansionary. New home sales month over month are supposed to be down 2.9%, while the Richmond Fed survey is a negative eight. Now, recall what I said yesterday. I think you're going to see a surprise in new home sales number. Why? Because again, the home builders are lenders and they can buy down the rate to assist new home buyers. Look, current 30-year rates are now 7.4% for people with credit scores of 720 to 740. If you're below that, the rate is higher. Or they can toss in upgrades, like I said, to make that new home look even more attractive, right? Kitchen upgrades, bathroom upgrades, landscaping, pools, all that stuff. All things that will cost the buyer a fair amount of money if they tried to do it themselves, but doesn't really add a whole lot to the cost of the home builder, does it? Because they're buying stuff in discount, big discount. So suddenly the new home is told, oh, look, we're offering all these free upgrades. And you know what happens next. You just know what happens next, right? Uh, they succeed in doing that. Trust me. I, <laughs> it happened to me in Toll Brothers in 2000 when I built a house up in New York, but we can talk about that later. This morning, U.S. futures are lower. Dow is down 60, S&P is down 4, NASDAQ is down 10, the Russell's up 2. Investors are going to be watching the macro data this morning uh, and earnings out of Lowe's. And they just, they just reported and they cut their full year estimate as spending by do-it-yourselfers wings. It's a Home Depot repeat. Lowe's is quoted down $5 in the pre-market. We're also getting reports out of BJ Wholesales and Dick's Sporting Goods uh, later this morning. Treasuries remain concerned over the drama in D.C. One month, T-bills are now yielding 5.8% annualized. As the temperature in the room rises, the two years now yielding 4.4%, uh, 4 the five years yielding 3.8%, and the 10 years yielding 3.75%. Shorter duration bills continue to pay you more than 5%. On an annualized basis, three and six month bills are yielding 5.35 and 5.43 respectively. Oil traded up yesterday, up six tenths to end the day at 72.12 a barrel. Yesterday's headline, what was that? What caused the rise? Well, it's the thing, seasonal summer demand, right? The rise in demand. And it's Memorial Day weekend this weekend, which is the official kickoff. So that's one. Then the planned U.S. purchases to refill the SPR was a second one. And then those pesky supply cuts by the Saudis uh, that are already announced. And then the cuts, those are the ones we know about. But then think about the ones that we may get on June 4th when they meet again. The American Petroleum Institute is due to report the state of stockpiles for the first two weeks of May later today. The expectation is for it to show a small rise in crude. 
So let's see. A push higher is going to see us hit resistance at 74.50, which while support remains at 70 dollars. So for now, we're stuck in a very tight range. Gold fell by $25 yesterday. It's trading at 19.76 an ounce this morning. A stronger dollar ignited by more hawkish commentary out of some of the Fed members is being cited for the weakness in gold yesterday. Think St. Louis's Jimmy Bullard who thinks we need to go at least another 50 basis points higher before this is over. Now, he didn't say that it had to happen in June, but what he did say was, if we pause in June, do not think that the rate increases are over, as he suspects inflation is going to remain sticky, and the Fed will be forced to push the terminal rate higher, closer to 6%, which, by the way, should not be a surprise, because Loretta Mesta and Neely Kashkari and a couple of others have been kind of floating that idea for months now. Higher rates will support a stronger dollar, and that will put pressure on gold. Notice the dollar is up 2.2% since the May 8th low, while gold is down 5% since the May 5th high. Trendline support uh, for gold is now at 1970. Uh, so we remain in this 1970-2020 trading range until we get more clarity out of D.C. and clarity out of the Fed. European markets this morning are struggling around the unchanged line. Eurozone composite PMI for May was solid for services sector, but weaker for manufacturing. And while services does appear healthy, it is manufacturing that is a powerful drag on the overall reading. And in Italy, the price of pasta is soaring. It's up 18% last month, and that's more than double the country's inflation rate. And that's an issue, uh, an issue for many Italians, Camiche. Okay, at 7 o'clock, we see the UK was up two tenths, with France down the most at down eight tenths. All the other market centers are lower by about three tenths of a percent. The S&P closed at 4,192 yesterday, right? It was flat on the day. Actually, it was up less than 65. It was up 65 uh, cents. And while the debt negotiations continue to provide plenty of drama, in the end, they do not price stocks. If a deal gets done, we could see a relief rally that tests the August highs of 43.25. A debt discussion failure and talk of default will cause the algos go to free fall as sellers all run for the door, leaving the buyers to bid lower, which really isn't an option. Why? Because Joey told us it's not happening. So a default is really not happening. It should be off the table. Stop talking about it. In any event, that only reinforces my mantra. Stick to the plan. Don't try to pick tops and bottoms as a long-term investor. Continue your dollar cost averaging on a monthly basis. Reinvest your dividends until you need them as income. You know the deal, I, right? Because I'm talking as an investor, not a day trader. As a long-term investor, you have to stick to the plan and eliminate the noise. Okay, so now what do we have for dinner today? Well, this is such a great dish and you're going to have it over and over and over all summer long as, the, as you get the tomatoes out of your garden. Okay, and so this is Memorial Day weekend, which I can't even believe Memorial Day weekend is here. Uh, and it's a great dish for the barbecue buffet, right? Um, and it's also a great summertime dish, I just said. It could be a main course, it could be a side dish. Uh, you could use it a number of different ways. You can eat it hot, you can eat it cold, you can eat it at room temperature. It's very versatile, it looks great when it's presented on a striking white dish because you got the red from the tomatoes and the green from the basil and the red onions and, oh, it's so delicious. Okay, so for this you need fresh garden tomatoes, basil, garlic, red onion, fresh mutts. You need grated parmigiano, locatelli romano cheese, and you need the pasta of your choice. So maybe it's a penne regatta or farfalle or mustacholi regatta. You want something short. You don't want spaghetti. You want kind of a short pasta. Essentially what you're doing is you're making a tomato salad and then you're putting it over the hot pasta. So you want to dice your tomatoes, slice the red onion, slice the garlic, add the chopped basil, chunks of fresh mozzarella cheese, salt and pepper, a couple of turns of olive oil, right? Now you can add a little bit of oregano. Don't overdo it though. Just add a little bit of oregano because uh, you can always add more if you want, but just add a little bit. Now prepare it and then you have to let it sit so it marinates. And if you're going to use it the same day, just leave it out on the counter, cover it with ceramic. If you're going to use it tomorrow, put it in the fridge. But if you put it in the fridge, you've got to take it out a half, at least a half an hour before you're ready to use it so it kind of warms up because you don't want to put ice cold tomato salad on hot pasta. You want it to be room temperature, right? Um, now, when you're ready, you're going to bring a pot of salted water to a rolling boil. You're going to add the pasta. You're going to cook it for your eight to 10 minutes. You want it to be al dente. 
Um, you want to strain the pasta, always reserving a little mud full of the pasta water, return, strain it nice, now return the pasta to the pot, and add back some of, just a little bit of the pasta water, just to moisten the water. You don't want to have a puddle on the bottom of the, of the pan. You want the pasta to have soaked up all the little water you put in. Now, once that's done, um, you want to take the tomato salad and you want to add the tomato salad right to the hot pasta, right? And then you're going to take two or three handfuls of the grated cheese, whichever one you chose. You're going to put it in there. You're going to mix it, toss it, put it into a nice white bowl and serve it immediately. The hot pasta is going to soften those chunks of mozzarella that you put in there so it'll get a little bit stringy, not completely, but it'll just, the mozzarella will soften and it's so delicious. In any event, it looks great on your barbecue table. It's a great dish to have. You will enjoy this all summer, different points all summer because it's simple to make. The whole thing takes you as long as it takes you to dice the tomatoes and boil the pasta, really, if you want to make it right away. Um, but it's always better to make your tomato salad. Try to make the tomato salad in the morning so it sits all day. Day and it marinates and it makes its juice. So when you boil the pasta and put it together, there's enough juice on there that, um, oh, it's so good. It's so good. In any event, look, it's Tuesday. It's another day in the market. Sure to be exciting. Until tomorrow, take good care.